he makes it a two-point ball game. That's where I think he'll have most of his do his damage tonight, Ron. Oklahoma stays in that 2-3 zone. Kansas has been good at attacking it so far. Sasha Khan, a quick trap on him. Across the way, Rush puts up an air ball. Couple of slow starts previous to this game for Brandon Rush. Carter going to put up a three. That's off the mark, but it's Rush who rebounds. Got to get back. Right at the other end. Dishes back to Chalmers. He'll score the easy one. Put it up with his left hand and in. Rush, oh, excuse me, right leaked out. Julian Wright showing a lot of versatility over the last few games. And his head coach, Bill Self, continues to push him, saying, you don't know how much better you can be in the paint. Just keep working. Keep going at it. Griffin inside. Dishes it off. Blocked by Rush. Talked about Brandon Rush, one of the best shot-blocking guards in the country. And this team averages about seven blocks a game, leads the Big 12. Hard to score inside against Kansas. Right, back over to Chalmers, almost threw it away. The double team, Khan inside and scores. Wow. What a pass. So that, Wright's doing everything tonight. He's scoring, he's assisting. That pass was like a rubber band, man. He just stretched that arm around a defender. And from where they're getting their shots, KU with an outstanding percentage to open. They're five of seven as that shot off the mark. Carter with the follow, not there, and rebounded by Wright. Carter has had difficulty in this mini slump run of scoring in the lane. From the corner, air ball put up by Collins. Collins hustles back to get on his band, but along the baseline is Neal, and he missed the reverse. Well, Neal's improved his dribble game this year, but passed up an open three that he would have taken a year ago. I think he was surprised at just how open he was. Kansas has done a really good job along the baseline. Well, their ball movement has been outstanding. Skip pass over to Rush. Three-pointer got it. And a timeout, maybe a 30-second timeout by Jeff Capel, but he wants to talk to his team. And he's not hollering at anybody, but he wants to instruct. And that's what you've got to do 13-4 to four against uh, this KU team. Well, Julian Wright, you watch the versatility, the outstanding passing, scoring. He's been much more efficient in the lane, Ron. Watch this one. Thread the needle to Khan. Side to side versus the zone. This is outstanding. We talked about the efficiency of Kansas offensively and defensively, and part of the efficiency on the offensive end is the great ball movement. So it's a nine-point burst as uh, Kansas goes on top 13 to four. Fran this KU team the last six ball games coming into this one tonight Well, they they have been better than good it's just you know how great do we want to be and that's the way they've been playing quite frankly and the balance Ron three players averaging 12.7 to 11.7 who do you stop who do you key on longer longer checks into the lineup for the Sooners Deep in the corner, Carter barely drew iron on that one. I'm not so sure that it was not partially blocked. Robinson in the ball game for KU. Missed Saturday's ball game with a turf toe. But he looked very good at the shoot around today. And although a lot of people say Collins is such a spark plug, Russell Robinson is so much of the glue, a junior out of New York City. And the toughness, you're right, Ron. And when I mentioned Wally Pip to Robinson and Bill Self today, Bill Self said, oh, no, 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 don't go there. Also, Russell said, no, he didn't know who he was. That's and right. Bill said, I don't want you to know who he was. And for those of our young fans at home, Wally Pipp, the guy that was replaced by Lou Gehrig, who only went on and played 2,130 straight games. Show a timeout is called, and a little bit of a montage from uh, the senior evening. Neil, one of the four gentlemen who will not play anymore in the Lloyd Noble, and look at Nate Carter. There's uh, Neil again. 
Kelvin Sampson is back this evening. Kellen, his son, a senior, actually graduated in three and a half years. And his dad, of course, uh, no ball game tonight in Bloomington. So he and his wife were able to come here along with his sister for senior night. Let's go back and, and talk about KU and how good they have been in the last six ball games. We saw them on Saturday. We've seen them a couple of times in this run. They haven't just been good. They have been just very, very, very good. They really have, Ron. And the key reason is they are so good both offensively and defensively. I mean, we've known they've been a great defensive team all year. They're constantly in the top five in field goal percentage defense offensively as well. They have a lot of weapons, a lot of balance, and the ball movement has been particularly good because they've had six different leading scorers in the last six games. You know, let's uh, check in with the third member of our broadcast team, Holly Rowe. What do you have for us, lady? Well, guys, we have an early injury in this game right out of the gate. Taylor Griffin had a spectacular dunk for OU, but he has injured his lower back. He came to the bench, received treatment. Right now, they've got a big, heavy heating pad on his lower back. He's sitting on the bench. Guys, they can't afford to lose him. He's been playing more and more minutes throughout the season. Started 18 games. They're hopefully get him back, guys. Okay, Holly, that's that's great hustle. It happened just a couple of moments ago in the very first sequence of the night. And I wondered when he went down, having uh, had some problems with my back in my lifetime, and that's exactly what it looked like happened to him. And, and boy, he was in some pain quickly. Hopefully, the youngster will be able to return tonight, or this will not be something that will linger into uh, the Big 12 tournament. Well, the size particularly is a big problem for Jeff Capel against Kansas. And I joked about his dismount off the dunk, Ron. Came down on both feet. Didn't look like he sprained an ankle, so the back injury makes perfect sense. Sometimes the wrong angle seems like a small thing, but that can be enough to take you down. It's like you know people who have had back surgery when you watch them sneeze. A&M in Kansas on top at 12 and 2. Uh, Texas in third place. Then K-State at 9 and 5. And the Sooners at 6 and 8 of Jeff Capel. Jeff, another one of these new faces, one of six new head coaches in the Big 12. And he's done a really outstanding job. And in fact, he's fun to watch on the sideline, his demeanor and handling of the kids. Uh, you're, you're exactly right, Ron. I think uh, Joe Castiglione and the OU people got exactly what they bargained for, a rising star who is in the uh, middle of a rebuilding process. Very good recruiting class for Jeff Capel, led by Blake Taylor, younger brother of, excuse me, Blake Griffin. Griffin, yeah. 6'9", with top 25 players in the country. Told today by some people who uh, covered this area that uh, he is easily the best player in the state. And it, here's good news. His brother, Taylor, uh, is going to come back into the ballgame. Carter now four points and five of Oklahoma's rebounds. A little token pressure. Kansas has done a very good job of going inside recently, particularly with Darrell Arthur, the freshman. Ball goes into Arthur. Reverses the turnaround, not there, the tip, and that's easy pickings right there for Darnell Jackson. Darnell's got a lot of tickets here tonight, as many as he could get anyway. He is from Midwest City, which is a, a suburb of uh, Oklahoma City, a part of the Oklahoma City area. And probably their best rebounder, a rebound every three minutes, which is outstanding in limited time. Longer, longer, works against Jackson. The double team as they come back over with the young man they call Shady, Darrell Arthur, and he helps out on the block. We talk about the length and the size of Kansas. Take a look at that rebound margin. There's not much going wrong for the Jayhawks. Crocker misses on the sideline jumper. Here comes KU, they'll run. Russell Robinson with the alley-oop, and uh, couldn't handle it, but it is saved by Chalmers. How do you believe that? He threw it right off the legs of longer, longer. So 28 seconds on the shot clock. Most importantly for KU fans, it is Jayhawk basketball. Longer, one of the most improved players in the country, Ron, but interesting averages 15 points in their wins and only six points in sooner losses. You're surprised at this continued use of the jump zone? Not really, because there is a size disadvantage. Jackson got squared away to the hoop, had a good look and missed it. Anything you can do to keep Kansas on the perimeter right now? Travel caught against Crocker. First turnover against the Sooners at the 12:34 mark. Johnson's number 20. He replaces 
Coach Bill Self. Fourth year as the head man in uh, Lawrence, Kansas. And as you could look at the numbers, has done an outstanding job. And I think in watching him at shoot arounds and again today, he's very happy with his ball club and he's got a lot of reason to be. He knows that this is not only a team with promise this year, but a lot of promise next year as well. There's so much a lot of, it, of promise. Yes, so much of it reliant on who stays and who goes. And some talk that some of these guys will leave early. Griffin drives the baseline. Nobody took it away from him. Arthur kind of stood there and didn't take him on. The sophomore is going to be a very good role player for the tough-minded Jeff Capel. Arthur, ball was blocked. Austin Johnson. Double zero. Arthur picks up the foul. So let's take a timeout. 11 49 left in this opening half. Kansas 15 to 8. And we are back. Kansas number three in the nation 15 to 8. Right now, let's take it. Some of the great moments in the Big 12 this season. So here we go. Rush with the steal. It is Kansas in overtime. In Allen Fieldhouse. Collins. The distance. Overtime number three. Hogan. What a ball game. All the ball at the other end. Zeno. Texas Tech has upset the Kansas Jayhawks. Jeff Durant with 37 points and 23 rebounds. The exclamation point. So, Big 12 Conference games, uh, how about uh, player of the year and the question mark? A.C. Laud of Texas A&M or Kevin Durant of uh, Texas. We will see those two young men and their teams on Wednesday evening in Austin. You know how I look at it? Kevin Durant is the player of the year. A.C. Law, the most valuable player in the Big 12 and a lock first-team All-American, in my opinion. I'll tell you, Wednesday night ought to be just oh, a lot of man, fun. Give me goosebumps. Ball is almost stolen by Julian Wright. And I know our Aggie fans are wanting to know where the highlights of that Texas A&M win over Kansas were. But well, the college basketball continues on ESPN2 Wednesday night with a texas size Big 12 matchup. 9 Eastern AC Law and the Texas Aggies take on Texas led by freshman Kevin Durant. College basketball at ESPN2 Wednesday night. Also available in high definition. And here comes Collins for KU with the left hand. No basket. Foul was on the floor. Very interesting. Kansas had 13 points when Collins went out. About five minutes later, only two more. Let's see if the super freshman can continue to orchestrate this attack. Russell Robinson, nobody attended to him. Put that inbounds play in today, Ron. We watched them put a new inbounds play in today, and it worked perfectly. Here's Neal. Got bold with the lob inside. Longer, longer. Tries to take it up. Put it on the floor almost or held it down low. And Kahn took it away. Now Godbold has it. Godbold touched it last. It'll be KU basketball. Excellent hustle. That started because Julian Wright was able to shut down Longar. Take a look at this now. Watch Russell Robinson, number three in your monitor. Here he is right here. He goes to the foul line, breaks down the lane. That opens up like I-35 right outside campus. And an easy two points. I think we need another example. 35 anywhere. Yeah. Never really it's, open. It's not you're right. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> put up a left-hander. It was an air ball. Didn't draw iron on that one. Austin Johnson. Long well, pass. Sorry, Carter. Not that tall. Four turnovers against the Sooners. Ron, not to denigrate Kansas, uh, Oklahoma's backcourt, but if there is a weakness this year, it's been in the inability to get easy baskets because of point guard play. No pure point guard on the roster. And let's check in with Holly Rose. She has more on that subject. Well, guys, one of the challenges OU has this year is they're playing without a true point guard. Coach Jeff Capel says, in his opinion, 
as we see a tie up there a true point guard is a guy who does whatever it takes to win and that's the only thing he does if he has to score he does if he needs to make sure other people score he does he said right now he's got two players, Austin Johnson and Bobby Mays, who are doing the very best they can despite never having played point guard, either one of them, in high school. So that's the card they're dealt. They're trying to make these guys into point guards. And he said, hey, they're doing a pretty good job for not having that under their belt coming in. Boy, Holly, you're right. When you look at a situation where you face off against a veteran KU club like this one tonight, the task becomes yes. even more difficult. The hardest part, Ron, when you don't have a point guard is you have to do more coaching from the sideline, and that really wears you out. Kansas has gotten a lot of offense lately because Sharon Collins can break down a defense. You don't have to run any plays or as many plays. You look at the great teams in the country, Michael Conley at Ohio State, Lawson at Carolina, teams with great, AC Law, teams with great point guards, manufacture easy baskets. Boy, Austin Johnson, way off on that one, got bowl for three. He can't find the mark. Con rebounds. Too many, I'm sorry, not too many contested shots right now. The foul a moment ago was on Russell Robinson, his first. Man, I'm telling you. Inside, back out. They swing it, then back inside. And by then, they've got the defense on their heels and con by reversing it. Yes. Really put them on their heels. And Julian Wright is more effective as a four man in the paint than he is trying to be a three man. Nate Carter. Nate is coming in with a little bit of a chip tonight and a little bit of attitude because of this being senior night. Speaking of attitudes, Reese Davis, what do you got for us, partner? <laughs> Just call me out, Ron. Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Brian Butch of Wisconsin expected to miss four to six weeks after suffering an elbow injury, which included a fracture in that play against Ohio State. Aaron Andrews reporting that Butch has been told there is a chance Wisconsin goes deep. He could return late in the season. Bobby Abreu of the Yankees might miss a couple of weeks with a strained oblique. Of course, it's very early in baseball. Sports Center after the game, ESPN News always. Reese, there must have been a dropout in your hearing uh, up there. I said great attitude. I didn't say attitude. <laughs> Come on, partner. I'll tell you that Butch injury may affect Wisconsin seating. Hey, that's a toughie. Yes. Eight point lead at KU. Russell Robinson will just drive it right down the sideline. Remember on Saturday how many moving screens were called against Kansas on those side pick and rolls. Good job by the freshman Arthur that time. Right down the baseline to score it. And you're right. The KU coaches today spent a lot of time screaming about don't move until the pick is set. Yes. Don't get us in trouble with the man trying to throw the pick. Ron, watch how effective Julian Wright is from the low post. He's really done his damage. He can be the point guard from the low post. There's the kick out and then the feed inside by Robinson. But the catalyst on the play, Julian Wright. Boy went right back inside, reversed it, and just zipped by Griffin. That foul was on the big uh, freshman. Darrell Arthur, his second, and he's going to have to go to the bench. And he has been contributing mightily with rebounds and also scoring, but not so in the early going tonight with the two quick fouls. But this is the perfect Bill Self team. If you looked at Bill Self's teams in the past, Ron, four postmen, five perimeter guys. So even foul trouble to the young guy, he's able to bring in the likes of Jackson and Khan. Carter. And Nate's got eight points. That's good news for the faithful for the Sooners. As I said, he's had a tougher time averaging 16 in conference play. It's the follow by Wright, and he loves to put it up with his left hand. After practice today, he moved to the other end of the floor and worked with nothing but shooting with Jump his shots. left hand. Jump shots. Jump either. shots. You're right. Yep. He just really gets a lot of joy out of that, being able to shoot it from either side. And he's very good at it. Got bowl with a bouncer inside. Carter, that one was blocked by Wright. Great size. It's hard to score over him if you're Nate Carter. You've got to muscle it through, right? You can't finesse it. That blocked by Crocker, but it comes back to Wright, the soft jumper, not there. 
Here comes Godbold. Without the true point guard, hard to get transition baskets, and you have to become extra efficient in your half court sets. Hard to do against a great defensive team. And because OU is probably forcing a little bit as Crocker traveled, they're only shooting to 21% right now. 6.59 left, opening half, and our score 23 to 12. KU. We'll come back and talk to this gentleman. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Refreshingly Smooth Bud Light, always worth it. And in part by State Farm. Great service, great rates. It's all here. Nobody takes care of you like State Farm. And it's Kansas 23 to 12. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, guys, I am here with Indiana coach Kelvin Sampson, but tonight he's here just as a dad. You're here for senior night for your son, Kellen. How hard was it for you as a family when you left to take the Indiana job for him to stay here as a player? It really wasn't hard for Kellen. He, he has a great love for this university. He started here as a fourth grader, and he's he's going to he graduated from Oklahoma. This is his school, and he loves Oklahoma, and it's been a great experience for him. What's it been like for him to have a new coach this year? You've coached him for so much of his life. How is how's that gone? Well, Jeff Capel's just a, a class guy, wonderful, wonderful coach. Um, my wife Karen and I will always be indebted to Jeff the way he treated Kellen and embraced him and allowed him to remain a part of this program. And I know that was not an easy thing to do always, but I think it tells you a lot about Jeff Capel as a person. Coach, they're going to honor you at halftime as part of the 100-year celebration of OU basketball. What was something you learned as a coach that has made you a better coach from your time here? I, I think that as you get older, um, you realize how important relationships are. And I had 12 wonderful years here, 12 wonderful growing years. I, I, I wouldn't trade this experience for anything. And the relationships you build and the friends you make and, and how that's a lasting uh, relationship over the years. So it's been great for me, and, and I'm honored to be back. Coach, last question. Indiana, you're knocking on the door trying to get into the NCAA tournament in your first season there. What are your chances? Well, we have a big week coming up. I mean, this is a great opportunity week for uh, for the Hoosiers, and uh, we have to go to Northwestern on Wednesday, and we come home to play Penn State, so we have a great opportunity. All right, thanks for your time, Coach, and okay. congratulations on your son's senior night. Thank you very much. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. Nice to see uh, Kelvin and, uh, and his wife and family here before the ball game tonight. 12 years, Ron, 10 NCAA, the Final Four. Here's a look at uh, the family. And uh, before the ball game, here they are coming out. And uh, of course, a lot of people want to come over and shake hands, say hello. And I'm very, very glad that to hear him make the statement that he did about Jeff Capel and what a class act because people don't understand when a young guy comes in, he comes into a program where he's trying to establish for himself and he takes the coach who was leading son who was not a regular. And, you know, and everything still just, it worked wonderfully. And because of that man that you're looking at right there, because of Jeff. Well, the funny story, when Jeff Capel arrived on campus, he was playing two-on-two -two with Kellen and a couple of other players, Ron. Kellen said he'd never been more nervous in his life. But after the game, in fact, he got dunked on by the coach. And after the game, he said, this guy's a much better player than the old coach. <laughs> hey, listen, let me ask you something. <laughs> Kellen, you always get dunked on by the coach. Yeah. <laughs> you don't ever try to block his shot. Nate Carter gets it inside longer, longer. And the turnaround oh, yeah. goes down. Good, solid move by Longer. He got the ball deep. Close to the rim, and the defender was really never a factor. His first two. Much improved. One of the most improved players in the Big 12 this year. Chalmers, nice hustle right there to get that carom. And the skip pass over to Rush. He'll put it on the floor a couple of times. And an offensive foul. Credit Michael Neal, who set up underneath the play and uh, took the charge. <laughs> And here are the two gentlemen that, that we were talking about a moment ago before the ball game, Jeff Capel and, uh, and Kelvin Sampson. 
And if there's anybody, Ron, that understands coaching father-son relationships, it would be a guy like Jeff Capel, son of a coach. That's right. That's exactly right. His dad, the former coach at Old Dominion, now at Charlotte, the NBA as an assistant. And his dad, he and his dad communicate every day. In fact, his dad ha helps him critique games. He will help him critique this one tonight when it's all said and done. Now, Oklahoma has done a better job of slowing the pace. Candace with only 27. Right off the mark, and that's Longer Longer who comes down with the rebound. Kansas, though, with an 11 point bulge. Johnson pulls up, and Austin is off the mark. Here comes Collins. Had a chance to run. Four on two, and the Jayhawks, the easy two. That may be the answer right there. Well, it started with a long shot, Ron. The long shot leads to a long miss. Defense is not back, and the run out by Kansas taking advantage of that four on two. They double team Carter, and that's a sign of respect. Yep. Longer, they come over with a double on him. So the three pointer on the way, and it's off. OU is 0 of 9 from beyond the yard. And now make it 0 of 10 as Khan rebounds that one. One on five, and Rush pulls it out. Kansas almost looks a little tired, Ron. Not the spring in their step we've seen recently. It's warm in the arena. Come on. One thing Bill Self has tried to do is establish Khan as an inside scorer. He comes into tonight shooting over 65% in his last four games. Part of that four-man rotation in the post. Shot clock is a 10. Offensive foul called on Godbold. We talked about quick shots, quick threes lead to open court situations. Rush gets it done in transition from the freshman, and Kansas up by 15. If there ever was a week to leave it all on the floor. One. The tremendous defensive play. Hustle, hustle. A family to the world. The wait is over. They are going to the NCAA tournament. Championship Week presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. March 1st through the 11th on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Up on the UPS Halftime Report, the Hoyas experience a little bit of Orange Crush. We'll also crown the big man on campus for the entire year. And a big man for the Badgers feeling a little battered and bruised. We'll get you up to date on the condition of Brian Butch. Digger and Stacy will join me. We'll see you in just a little bit, Ron. Okay, Reese, thanks so much, partner. Big Monday presented by Bud Light, and tonight we're here in Norman, Oklahoma, for this matchup between the third-ranked Kansas Jayhawks, 31-16. to They lead with 2.30 on the clock, and how about this for field goal defense? OU held to six field goals in the first 17.30 of the ball game. Russell Robinson on the run, right wing. Six field goals. Saturday, OU held Texas to two field goals for 20 minutes. Half. Yeah, a conference record. Texas still won by 10. Taylor Griffin picks up the foul. Well, none of those numbers really surprise you, except Kansas is one for eight. Kansas holds people in the two-point range to as low a percentage as anybody in the country. Because of that shot blocking, Ron, teams only shoot 40% from Kansas inside the yard. There you see the zone. Arthur, that's what he does very well. He's missed two of those tonight. And a whistle and a foul, and I think Russell Robinson might, yeah, he just picked up his second foul of the evening. Mentioned Kansas's defense. This is just in the Big 12, but these numbers are very 
very close to being at the top of college basketball as well. 37%. The steals, the blocks. One and one. Crocker off badly on that one as Kahn comes down with the rebound. The double on Robinson gets it away to right, and Robinson was fouled. Well, tomorrow's Super Tuesday means a night of college basketball on ESPN. It will be Michigan taking on Michigan State. And then at 9 Eastern, the Florida Gators look to sweep the season against Tennessee. Super Tuesday tomorrow night presented by Lexus. Those two, those two games, Ron, are why I don't believe you should expand the field from 65 because those are two critical games tomorrow night. Chalmers hits the 18-footer. Michigan essentially is in an NCAA tournament situation down the stretch here. A win over the Spartans would certainly help their cause, although they've got work to do. Griffin, the pass inside. Crocker cut the wrong way, and Chalmers with the basketball, and it's blocked from behind by Griffin. Chalmers didn't feed him and did not hear from a teammate. Got it blocked. Neal works against Stewart, who had some good minutes on Saturday in uh, their win over good. Iowa State. You're right, good energy player, the brother of Roderick Stewart, having a terrific year at USC. Shot clock is at six, down to five. Deep in the corner, got it. Crocker. Bill Self wants a timeout. Well, Kansas 33 to 19. We are under a minute to play in this opening half. And Oklahoma, that's the first three-pointer that they've hit in the first half. And we were just commenting during the timeout the toughest three-pointer that they've taken. Sasha Khan, 6'11, challenged it. And that ball was in the air for a long time. And this has been an Achilles heel for Oklahoma. They gave themselves a chance to beat Texas on Saturday, Ron, but not efficient offensively right now. Talked about the lack of a point guard. Not a good outside shooting team. They've basically gotten their wins this year on grit. 15 wins. Collins. This is essentially a last shot situation. Difference of about three and a half. Shot clock is just now getting to 10. So they'll set the play in motion. Collins, we outside, looks over the clock. Five seconds down to four. He's going to take it the distance. Could not shoot the reversal because it was blocked partially. Got bold at the other end. Puts up the runner and can't get it. We are at halftime. Julian Wright. Had a really good first half, particularly early. 12 points, 5 of 7 from the field and 4 rebounds. Let's go to Holly Rowe. Holly. Coach Capel, you're down 33-19. Where do you begin to dig your way back here in the second half? Well, hopefully we can start making some shots. Hopefully we can make some better decisions and value the ball. But our defense has been okay for the most part. It's a team that's averaging 80 points. We've held them to 33 right here. We've done some decent things defensively. Offensively, we really struggle. With your three-pointers not falling, where else do you go on offense? Well, hopefully we can go inside. We've tried to go inside the long guard. He made one good move in there. Nate Carter's been effective in there. We've gotten to the foul line. But hopefully we can get long guard going. Um, and then hopefully we can get some drives and get fouls and get some penetration from there. All right. Thanks very much, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Thanks, Coach. 33-19, our halftime score, KU. Now let's join Reese Davis, Digger Phelps, and Stacy Dales with the UPS Halftime Report. All right, Ron and the Jayhawks about on target for what they've been doing since their loss at home to Texas A&M. Won six straight, blowing out Big 12 competition. Glad to have Right, dishes it back to Rush. Kansas likes to go to Con early in half to establish him. Backs it in, backs it in. And it looks like Griffin's going to be called for a push. See the versatility of Julian Wright. Griffin picks up two, but 
Young man who's got the frame to be an NBA small forward, but right now his best position is as a power forward. And he has embraced it for this very selfless team. Two three zone. Remember, Ron, they opened in the zone. Chalmers skip pass back to Collins. And Collins will take it the distance, not there, right with the tip. Two KU players go down across the way, and Mays has the shot blocked by Khan, but still the follow. Good job by Nate Carter staying with it. Stolen by Neal. Got goal for three. We mentioned the tempo in the first half was to Jeff Keaton's liking. They had just come up empty, but a couple big baskets gets them back in the ball game. Is going to be whistled on number three, Bobby Mays. First, the hustle led to the Carter basket and a great play by Michael Neal, Ron, who has become so much more versatile than in his junior year when he was just known as a shooter. Foul on Mays, his second. Mays played AOU basketball with Kevin Durant. Nice little yeah. pick and roll there. Wow. Left hand. How about that? <laughs> well, we talked about it in the first half. Right? You better not just think that uh, he could only operate with one hand being his right. Very effective with his left as well. I'd like to see AC Wall and Julian Wright in a in a shootout <laughs> with, with what supposedly is the weak hand. Well, both are very, very good at that, aren't they? Deal with the jumper. Couldn't get it to follow. And it'll be. David Godbold going to the free throw line. Little slip screen on the pick and roll. Watch him just leave early. That opens up the lane because Carter thinks he has the help on the ball screen. Kansas, one of the best pick and roll teams in, in college basketball, Ron. A lot of variety. Big guys who are mobile and guards that are effective off the dribble. And they certainly work on it hard enough, too, yes, don't they? They do. I think Danny Manning has brought some of that from the NBA. Where the pick and roll is so prominent, he does work with those big guys on a daily basis. Almost get the sense that Kansas has rolled to sleep because they had the big lead in the first half. Well, let's see how much this OU crowd can help them because they got sighted just a moment ago until this turnover, the bounce pass stolen from Godbold to Chalmers. That's where you don't have a point guard right now. Chalmers fouled, and it may have been Godbold a little bit of frustration there. Holly Rowe will check in with you. Guys, I checked with Kansas coach Bill Self at the half, asked him what the focus would be here in the second half, and surprisingly, he said defense. He wasn't happy at all despite the 33 to 19 score at halftime with his team's intense defensive focus. He said, we were flat. We didn't come out with the energy that I would have liked to see. He said, honestly, Oklahoma had some good open looks. They just didn't hit their shots. He said it wasn't due to our defense, so they want, he wants to see his team pick that up here in the second half. Okay, Holly, thanks so much. You know, it's not surprising coming on the road after the game that they played at home on Saturday, which we did, because for three quarters of the ball game, they simply couldn't play much better than they did on Saturday. Well, you're right, Ron. You don't, you don't mess with Curtis Shaw now. Curtis, and, and again, I, you know, I think he just gets better and better, but he's telling Mays and Collins, don't want to see any lip. Yep. Between the two of you, toward each other. I just want you to play the game. Preventive officiating. Yeah, that's. I think that's good. <laughs> then the crowd can't go ooh and ah because that foul right there is called on Collins. And that's a good foul. He and be, might have been a, a what we might call. That's exactly right. Bill Self points to Thank Collins. You. Yes, yes, because Curtis Shaw was going to call the next little bit of interaction between the two. That's exactly right. Good officiating right there. Neal with the bounce pass to Carter. Nate puts it up with the left hand too hard. And Khan tied up. Godbold ties it up with a possession error says it'll stay right where it is. Well, Khan did a very good job of challenging that shot. See the challenge there, but look at the effort by David Godbold. 
one of those blue collar guys left behind from the Samson era who's embraced Jeff Capel. Very similar styles, Ron. You can tell Jeff Capel's intensity as a coach is rubbed off. Hey, Carter has it blocked going to the hoop, but you gotta get a, to shoot a couple. You got a six, six, ten guy on you. Good job of driving. We talked about that balance. Not evident tonight. Of course, Julian Wright is the main go-to guy. Sasha Khan picks up his second foul. I really like what Carter did there, Ron. He had Khan away from the basket and just drove him. How about this guy? 62 of his last 67 free throws in Big 12 play. And the interesting thing about why he became a starter <laughs> was the suspension to longer, longer. And all of a sudden, OU fans who were upset about that realized that because of that suspension, that we, might, we might not even tonight be talking about Nate Carter because he simply was not getting any minutes. Oh, you're right. Four points a game in a non-conference. 16 in conference play. That's an unusual jump. Collins spin move, and Griffin is there to get a piece of it and knock it away. First time in a while the freshman has been challenged tonight. Not having one of his better games. Griffin strong to the hoop. Tried to deal it off. Came down with it out of bounds. KU ball. Holly, let's check back with you. Well, guys, it is senior night tonight for Nate Carter, and I asked him, what is the most important thing that you'll take away from your time here at OU? And he said, the gratitude I have for Jeff Capel. More I don't like moment. it. Technical call on Jeff Capel. Ron, this is the second time that we've seen there was a missed call, a lot of contact, and I think Jeff Capel had the right to be upset. Now, I don't think Tom O'Neill was in position to make the call on the foul, but he did call Capel for the technical. If there's a bad call, don't penalize the coach with the team. Take a look at this now. See if there was a little extracurricular activity. There's the illegal screen by Wright. And Jeff Capel wanted it called. Don't compound a referee's mistake with a technical. Give the coach some breathing room. Walk away from him as quickly as you can. Collins back to Wright, and he was fouled by Neal. That was a good call. That's the first foul on Neal. You know, in a, in a, in a strange way, the, the technical foul, and Jeff Capel's picked up a couple of them, Ron, have endeared him to Sooner fans. Much in the same way Billy Tubbs grabbed the mic or Kelvin Sampson used to rip the coat off. Took it up strong. Collins couldn't get it to go, and Godball will push it up for the Sooners. Sooners have really challenged the 5'10 Collins tonight. Griffin rattles in and out. Right. Well, Got the rebound, and now another foul called by Tom O'Neill. Let me tell you what I didn't like about that. If I were if I were the Sooners on that possession, I would have driven the ball to the basket and put the onus on the officials because they are going to call it close right now. Griffin bailed them out by shooting the 18-footer. Every time there's a call that's questionable, go right back inside and make the officials blow the whistle in your favor. Chalmers got it. Chalmers coming off back-to-back -back outstanding games. 17 and a half in his last two. Not afraid to take big shots. Three-quarter counted, and he'll go to the line for a four-point play. Fouled by Chalmers. We've seen this act before in Michael Neal's career. Last year's Big 12 newcomer. So let's take a timeout. Oklahoma says we won't go away. 40 to 
the 30 KU. Championship week, March 1st. This telecast is available in high definition on ESPN HD, live and in color. Ron Franklin, Fran Freshella, and Holly Rowe coming to you from Norman, Oklahoma, Lloyd Noble Center. It's Big Monday, presented by Bud Light. Senior night here in Norman, Oklahoma. Michael Neal with the all-time Big 12 record, Ron. 3.93s a game a year ago. Got into a shooting slump early in the year, only 20%, but is heated up in conference play. What a great story that he's even playing, though. You're right, bedridden. Look at that effort. Whipping fouled as he went back up. As he... And Holly Rowe has got more on Michael Neal. Well, guys, as you said, it is really just a miracle that Michael Neal is playing basketball. It wasn't a question of if he could play basketball, but would he live just a few short years ago? He had an infection that turned into a staph infection in his sinuses. He was rushed to an emergency room here at Oklahoma, their hospital system. And guys, it saved his life. He has a huge scar across his head that goes from ear to ear. And he said at one point he didn't know if he'd make it. I asked him today what his thoughts are on senior night. And he said, you know, I'm just happy that I even got to have a career. He said it's like a true story that happens that's a miracle on TV. He said now if I can just play the perfect game, it'll be the perfect ending. He hasn't been perfect tonight, guys, but it has been for lack of trying. Well, as I said, it is quite a story. You know, Ron, he got sick when he was at Seminole Junior College, and that OU system, the medical system, took care of him. Don't think that didn't help when Kelvin Sampson tried to recruit him. And Alon Morris. Bounce pass inside. Wright throws it away. That foul a moment ago, by the way, was the second on Wright. That's seven turnovers against the Jayhawks. It was a very good test for Kansas, who was so good over the six-game stretch. Peter Griffin fouled on the way to the hoop, and Wright may have just picked up number three. And that's what you do if you're Taylor Griffin. Remember earlier he settled for that 18-footer? Put the ball on the floor, take it to the rim, and attack. Good job here by the sophomore from Oklahoma City. Big number 32, Darnell Jackson, gets a warm-up off. And Julian Wright did just pick up his third foul. A couple of reasons why Darnell would be coming into the game. He is an off-the-bench guy. But plus the fact, as we mentioned, back in the first half, as Griffin shoots the free throw and makes it. Darnell is from Midwest City, which is a suburb of Oklahoma City. And a little more impetus for him tonight because of all the family members here. Quite a few at the hotel last <laughs> night. He was doing some entertaining. You don't think they were out there to watch the Oscars together, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> Opportunity to get to visit. Always good to see the kids on the road and their families on the road. Griffin gets them both. So it's a seven-point ball game at the 15-10 mark. Well, they took Kansas's first punch, and now they're punching back. First time that they have been this close since it was 15 to 8. Screen out high. Dish in the corner and West couldn't hold on. Nice anticipation by Godbold. Colin Wolf, Collins loves to drive baseline and dish it baseline. Timeout. 40 to 33. As Oklahoma feeling it. Can they get it closer? Ahead on Sports Center, two streaks at stake. The Hoyas and Mavericks shoot for a dozen. What the Colts will need if they hope to repeat next season and hear one of the hardest wrecks ever recorded on a racetrack after the game. So we're back at Norman. It is 40 to 33. And at KU, in the back of their mind, I'm sure they remember. Their blown leads this year, plus 14 to Paul. They lost it. Texas a and they led, plus 10, they lost it, 69-66 tonight. They led by as many as 14 in this half. 17 was their largest lead, though, that back in the first half. Bill Self was pretty prophetic, even though Oklahoma shot 24% in the first half. He was not happy with his team's intensity, Ron. That's right, and their defense, as you remember, he also reported to Holland. Dish inside. Nate Carter tries to reverse it. He was blocked, but he also was fouled. And I think Arthur just picked up his third foul. He did. Senior versus a freshman. He got the freshman in the air. He was able to slide by him. 
Little contact. It is three fouls on Arthur. Shot in the way he got it. Tomorrow night, Super Tuesday. I mean, tonight of college basketball in the ESPN. First of all, at 7 o'clock Eastern, Michigan and Michigan State. 9 o'clock Eastern, the Florida Gators try to win the season set against Tennessee. Super Tuesday tomorrow night, presented by Lexus. Got them both. 65 of 70 for Carter and Big 12 play from the line. OU's last eight points have come at the free throw line. Tells you something about their aggressiveness. Shots aren't falling, so you attack. Rush looking inside to Kahn. Dishes it off to him. And a foul on the floor. And let's see who that's going to go against. Steve Welmer with the call. Godbull just picked up his second foul. And because it's a third foul on Godbull, I beg your pardon, Arthur had picked up his third, which we told you. And that means at number 30, Julian Wright checks back in for the Jayhawks. This is actually not a bad foul percentage wise. Con 48% on the season. Not by design, but let's see if Con can make a couple. God Bowl goes out. Austin Johnson will check in. Austin wears number 20. Sophomore out of Amarillo, Paladura. Makes one. That is average or above. Good look right there at Rob Barnes doing some coaching on the bench. An assistant coach for Jeff Capel, former head uh, basketball coach at Ole Miss. That one bounces high. It's going to be taken down by number 24, Nate Carter. Works out well for Jeff Capel. One of two. Carter, a quick double team on him. He's gotten used to that, Ron, over the last part of the season. Griffin got to pull up at the free throw line. A little flat on the shot. Not much of an arc and it, that came hard off the back iron. He had to step again the drive. He pulled up. Rush. Nope. That's short. Caught on the follow and he was fouled. And the check in with Reese Davis. Reese. All right, Ron. Sports Center 30 at 30 update and. Syracuse coming up large, beating number 10 Georgetown 72 to 58. The Orange, they've now won five in a row. They snapped the Hoyas 11 game winner and might have punched their dance ticket with the victory. Wisconsin's going to be without Brian Butch for four to six weeks. Dislocated his elbow and suffered an associated fracture with that. More on that story on Sports Center after the game. ESPN News always on. Okay, Reese, thanks so much. Our situation, OU trying to bring it closer, but that con free throw was good. It makes it a seven-point game. And, boy, your feelings have got to go out to Butch. His his teammate undercut him, and obviously it was an accident, unintentional, but, boy, that's it. You, you put your elbows down to try to brace yourself when you fall like that, and that's, that's a tough injury. And one of the reasons Wisconsin's been so successful this year is the depth up front. With guys like Chapel and Butch, Steamsma. Con with that the free throw, nine points. Chalmers with nine, 14 points for Wright. And those are the guys that have done the most damage. Hard to score inside against Kansas. Block about seven shots a game. Ron, they block a shot every five possessions, which is pretty darn good. Well, Rush will pick up that foul. <laughs> Close line. <laughs> Bill Self just put his hands up to his face like he was watching a horror movie. <laughs> so Neo could make this a seven point game right here. Misses it, rebounded by Kong. It's one guy you don't expect to come up empty from the line. 
83 percent 82 percent for Neil and the young man in the story the report that Holly was doing on uh, his illness and how lucky he is to be alive and saying if he could just put together a, a special game tonight on senior night that that would really be special to him and his family yes it would you remember how many open shots he got a year ago with Terrell Everett and look out in gray it hasn't come as easy this year shot clock is at five Fran and Russell Robinson fouled by Austin Johnson of OU well, don't forget on Thursday night, two of the absolute best, not only in this conference, but in the nation, AC Law of AM squares off against Kevin Durant, Rick Barnes, and uh, Host G. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a good one. Huh? I'll tell you, it will be. It really will be. AC Law, he will be in the top 15 picks. He'll be the first senior taken in the NBA draft, I believe. I know some scouts were talking to Billy Gillespie. This week, and they, they asked him, is he as good as Darren Williams, who Billy helped recruit at Illinois? He said, no, I'm not about that good, but he's plenty good enough to play in the league. Russell Robinson. How about that internal clock Robinson had in his head, Ron? Shot clock running down. Smart play by the junior, the glue to this team. And just very quickly here, it's back to a nine point ball game. Ball tipped by Robinson, and Johnson actually did a good job of getting in front of him to keep him from retrieving the basketball. Well, we were joking with Russell today. He had that cast on. We were talking about, hey, you're soft. <laughs> but he's anything but soft. Turf toe is what he had, and as soon as practice was over, he had to put that boot back on. By the way, the youngster has an interesting hobby and habit. He brings his uh, digital camera every place they play. And after practice today, was walking around shooting pictures of Lloyd no Noble Arena. Last week at Manhattan, he did it as they came into the arena. Tripped up on the way to the hoop, and the OU fans wanted a call as Crocker went down. It goes as a turnover, turnover number 10. Let me tell you about Russell. He, the seating capacity of all the high school gyms he played in his career wouldn't add up to one of these Big 12 arenas. So, <laughs> high school gym probably holds about 50 people at Rice High School in Manhattan. Longer, longer. Picks up the fouls. He stepped out in front of Russell Robinson. You think of Rice High School, you think of Dean Memminger and Felipe Lopez. Well, Russ admitted that those pictures are not just for him and, and memories for him, but also for some of his buddies up there when he goes back home uh, to show them where he did play and probably had accentuate or is accentuated by the point that you just made about how small some of the places are right. that he played in in high school. Small gyms in that New York City Catholic League, but uh, Catholic League, but not devoid of a great talent, a great coaching in that league. Griffin. Griffin has had a nice ball game tonight. Some tremendous contributions. Hurt his back early on in the game, but has been there to uh, come back in and stay the course. Pre med major, excellent student, and his brother, we mentioned Blake Griffin, one of the top 20 high school players in the country, will be here next year. Crocker feeds it off to his teammate and longer, longer. Gets an easy two. Nice look by the freshman from San Antonio in a slump in Big 12 play, but a promising prospect for Jeff Capel. Interesting. Collins, 0 for 5 tonight, has not scored. Right with the jumper, not there. Con rebounds. Chalmers along the baseline, blocked by Longer Longer. And he gets longer and longer, Ron. <laughs> As he improves. Crossover dribble. Nice move right there. And he cans the shot. Tommy Mays. Bob Capel wanted the timeout. His ball club cuts it back to five. Couple freshmen, first Crocker in a nice look. Watch him come off the screen. Gets longer behind the defense. And then longer with that length. Sends it home. And 
Bobby Mays, the freshman who was injured part of the year. You'll be hearing about him the next three years. Young man from Suitland, Maryland. Mentioned an AAU teammate of Kevin Durant. Started the last two games Friday night. At 17 points at Texas Tech earlier in the Big 12 season. Very explosive athlete and a good defender. You know, tonight, KU started off so hot. I think they were 60% in the first almost eight minutes of the ball game. They are only two of eight in the second half shooting. We talked about Oklahoma's offensive inefficiency, Ron, but they've hold, held opponents to under 40% all season long. Culture of team defense being built here by Jeff Capel. Nice ball movement Sooners. They got numbers. Four on two. Alley -oop. And what a job as Darnell Jackson took it away. And on the other end, Chalmers gets a freebie. Four-point play because of the inexperience of the freshman who's not really a point guard. Not a good decision. Chance to cut it to three or two. Give credit to Darnell Jackson. He made the steal on a four-on-two break, and it led to a breakaway. And it was great defense by Oklahoma. That's been their standard, but then a poor decision. That was a 50-50 ball, and unfortunately for Jeff Cable, leads to two. Kansas still up by seven. So we're back 46 to 39 time now to take a look at the starter game track KU second half three of nine for the field five turnovers Kansas started well but you're right good defense by Oklahoma gritty play making just enough shots now to stay in this ball game 12 turnovers a key Ron for the Sooners OU points off turnovers only two in the first half seven this half combination of sloppy Jayhawk play and good aggressive defense Side, and there's the big fella, Darnell Jackson. Good job. He pumps his chest as a way to honor his family, lost his grandmother. God bowl back in the ball game, playing with three fouls. Carter just inside the three point line, and he can't tackle. Soft touch, 16 points. Mate. How about Nate Carter, a uh, high school teammate of Jared Dudley of Boston College. These two guys are finishing up their senior year with a buzz. Horizon High School in San Diego. White may have just picked up his fourth. College basketball continues on ESPN 2 on Wednesday. A Texas-sized Big 12 matchup. There it is. Texas A&M travels to the 40 Acres to take on the Texas Longhorns. And, of course, that means A.C. Law and Kevin Durant. College basketball on ESPN 2 Wednesday evening. Kevin Durant already the all-time leading scorer in Big 12 play, just surpassing Marcus Pfizer of Iowa State. 400 points in 14 games. By the way, Wright had to go to the sideline. That was his fourth foul. First time I've seen in a long time the deer in the headlights look from the freshman Sharon Collins, Ron. I'm not sure he has a basket. Okay, they have changed it right not for this fourth. They gave it to Collins, they're saying officially. Right only his third, but Bill Self still elected to uh, to put right on the bench for just a few minutes here. Oh, but you're right about Collins. Nobody has shut him down this year like he has been tonight. You see that helium pass he threw versus a very soft double team. The ball stayed in the air a long time. 
It's a good test for Kansas. They've been playing well, never easy on the road. You knew OU would give them a fight. That foul was on Neal, his second. I could rebuild self's lips just a moment ago as he hollered at his ball club, wake up. It's a team that, you know, almost can't stand prosperity every time we praise them. That's why Jayhawk fans can't get too excited yet. They're, they're thinking about those first round losses to Bucknell and Bradley. That ball will stay with KU. Carter with the hustle, but as he was going out of bounds, falling, had no place to throw the ball. And we all know how much trouble you can get yourself into by throwing it back into the middle of the fray. Yes, sir, especially under your opponent's basket, a cardinal sin. Zone. Tried to get the pass out to Jackson. It was stolen. Ten turnovers against the Jayhawks. Mays needs to get him in an offense. Mm. Mays tries for the steal. And Chalmers taken away by Neal. Mentioned Michael Neal, Ron. So much more improved all around for Jeff Cable. Hadn't shot it as well as a year ago, but he's not getting the same easy looks without the personnel. You remember the last time we were here with AM in town, the coaches talked about as Griffin scores and a chance for three-point play. Griffin is at his best going to the rim. He needs to stay away from the jumpers. Good side pick and roll. He's a big body kid. Good athlete. There's the dump down. Strength to get the shot up and draw contact. That's where Taylor Griffin is at his best. Young man from Oklahoma Christian. Played for his dad, Tommy. Darnell Jackson, his second foul. And both teams in a double bonus. Griffin now with double figures. He's got 10. We have a three-point ball game. This is the kind of an effort that has endeared Jeff Capel to Sooner fans. Stolen by Godbold. The dish to Carter, and he missed the reversal. Godbold back out to Neal. Three-pointer. No. Griffin on the follow. What an effort by Griffin, Ron. Talk about giving him a burst of energy. So we'll take a timeout. 7.48 left in our ball game, and OU has cut it to three. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Refreshingly Smooth Bud Light, always worth it, and in part by Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. So we are back, the nation's longest current postseason streak, 25. And our situation is Kansas. The lead has been cut to three. OU on a 19 to 12 run since that Cable T. And you talked about it. You thought it was a good technical foul. Well, it wasn't planned by design other than that the officials missed the call. But more importantly, the technical foul shows the feistiness of this young coach, 32 years old, former Duke point guard, who has really endeared himself to Sooner fans. And Joe Castiglione, athletic director, when they hired Jeff Capel back in the spring, Ron, a surprise. Many people thought he'd go with a more experienced coach, but this is like grabbing a, an actress from Buffalo and putting her on Broadway because she shows star potential. The BCU would be higher than that, would it? Wouldn't well, be Buffalo. Not, you know what I mean, a road show. A, <laughs> okay. a road show of Beauty and the Beast or something. But an unknown at the high major level. 
Nice movement of the ball. They got the pass in tight to Jackson, and he was fouled. Holly Rowe, let's check in with you. Well, guys, that play was almost exactly what Bill Self just drew up in the in the timeout. He wanted to utilize those three guards at the top and reverse the ball better. But guys, more importantly, he really got after his ball club for lack of focus three or four different times. Guys, you've got to focus. Where's the focus? He told his team, hey, we're better than this. We are so much better than this. You have to go out and play with it. the attack mode all the time. He said he wants to see them attacking, having more intensity here down the stretch. Okay, Holly, that's great hustle on your part there. I, I, I told you about three or four minutes ago, I could see Bill screaming yes. at his team to, to, to wake up, be alert, just what Holly was seeing. And Ron, that's why Kansas fans will never get excited about this team until they get through those first two rounds of the first week of the tournament. God bold misses. Griffin hustles for it. Knocked out of bounds by Oklahoma. So Kansas, their last six games, they have not even been close. They've been blowing people totally out. And they started off that way tonight. They led by as many as 17 in the first half. Would you say they've eviscerated their opponents? Well, they have the, <laughs> earlier, but tonight, <laughs> not happening this evening. Focus is a great point by Bill Self. It's still a relatively young team, but they do have a lot of experience. Right. And there is a clutch basket by a clutch player. One of the older guys who is uh, beginning to to make his way and I see an older guy as a sophomore but <laughs> he's making his way like a veteran experience a lot of playing time his first two years how good is he inside Ron he's a he's what a coach self keeps telling me you know, exactly you don't need to be outside doing some of the things you're trying to do we need you inside that's that's your effective do what you do best Griffin shot clock is at five the ball touched last by KU, but Oklahoma has only five seconds on that shot clock. Oklahoma, a very good inbounds team right here. Let's see if they can get a shot. God bowl. Once on the floor, pulls up with the jumper. Not there. Jackson tips it. Griffin got it, and he was fouled by Collins. Taylor Griffin has been Johnny on the spot. Tremendous energy player. One of those guys that you can, when you talk about skills, you say playing hard is a talent, and that's what this guy does. Passing, shooting, rebounding, playing hard is a skill. More basketball players need to factor that into their game. tonight coming down uh, with his wife from Bloomington Indiana because it is senior night and uh, Kellen their son a senior graduated in three and a half years and uh, you could see the smile the inner smile on Kellen's face tonight the fact that his parents were able to come here tonight for this special evening like what his father said that Kelvin Kellen is an Oklahoman he grew up here in fourth grade and beyond went to school at OU Second count on Rush of Oklahoma of the KU. We haven't seen many chinks in the armor from the Jayhawks. And this is a second, this is Ron, this is the equivalent of a second round game. This would be a one versus eight, two versus seven game. Kansas. 13 turnovers, but they only had four in the first half. So obviously nine in the second half. Three pointer. Well, he hasn't been perfect, but he's trying to create the perfect ending. We are tied. What else is new in the Big 12 this year? Holy smokes. O'Neal hasn't got many looks. We mentioned how good OU is off inbounds plays. Work on them all the time. Excellent look as wide open as he'll be tonight. He's been a hero before. Scoring by half. 
KU 33 points in the first half. They've been held at 18 in the second half and almost a complete reversal, 19 and 32. Bob Stoops on hand tonight uh, with his family. Bob Stoops comes to a lot of uh, basketball games here at Norman. Obviously enjoys the sport and wants to give support to, uh, to Jeff Cable, the new coach here. Sherry Cole in attendance as well. We saw Sherry tonight. Little token pressure. About to go under six minutes to play in our ball game. Neal against Chalmers out front. It's a good test for the Jayhawks. Robinson with the pull-up jumper. Rush on the follow, and it would not go. That ball did everything but go down, and it came right back up. Where has Brandon Rush been tonight? Five points, missed the chippy and close. And what did Bill Self say at the shoot-around today? we got to have him step up. Yes. As good as we've been playing, we need him to step up. Rush. Nate Carter got caught in the air and he'll pick up the foul for OU. Well, the balance that has been there for KU in the previous six ball games, they're lacking it tonight. You see Arthur and Collins both with zeros. Those two guys we said on Saturday were their best two players after five games. Well, the freshman. He got, he got two quick fouls. Yep. Al McGuire used to say the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. Unless you're Kevin Durant. Or Greg Oden. Rush, by the way, no second half points. And I'm sure that he can't believe that that putback just a moment ago did not stay. Here's Neal. Holds up for 12 feet, not there. Taken down by Chalmers. And the foul will be on Griffin. And that's four on Taylor Griffin. As importantly, Rob, both teams at 10 fouls, so everything will be two shots from here. This is a good test for Kansas, Ron. In this conference, you're not going to blow everybody out all the time, particularly on the road. Remember, A&M struggled at Nebraska a couple weeks ago. Hey, it's conference play. Yes. Plus the fact, you know, there's, there's a pretty wise coach in football down in Tallahassee. Coach Bobby Bowden believes full well. You don't get 100% of your players every night. It is not virtually impossible. It's impossible. I would they had a, they've had six tough games after that loss. They have been totally dominant. And, you know, tonight may be just a little blasé. And this uh, Oklahoma team, hey, it's senior night. That makes it even more special for everybody on this club. Oh, I agree. And one thing this Oklahoma team has not lacked all year is toughness, especially on the defensive end. Under five minutes to play. Every possession now for the Sooners must be judicious. Not there. Carter steals it. Jump ball. It'll go back the other way. Billy Gillespie and his Aggies watching on hand. A loss by Kansas would put them a little closer to the Big 12 title. But Rick Barnes and the Longhorns looking on as well. Well, there are a lot of people cheering for OU tonight who normally would not be That's for right. <laughs> Forget the Red River rivalry. Offensive foul. Called on Russell Robinson. That's his third. That's his third. What a ball game we'll have on Wednesday, Ron. Billy Gillespie bringing the Aggies into Austin. Rick Barnes has got those four freshman starters playing as well all year as they have. Now 15 in the country. AM up to number six. Mays, the runner. One point game. That's his bread and butter right there. The floater, the runner. Shoot it before the shot blocker can get to you. Mays. Oh. And, and that's a cheapie. He reached in. Oh, Jeff Capel, a former guard. 
Coach on the floor. Mays with a terrific move. Look how he shoots it before those really long shot blockers of Kansas can get to it. And then the cheapy foul 40 feet from the basket. That's it's one of those freshman mistakes. And you see the brotherly love right there, I guess you could say. So Collins will come back in. Russell Robinson will go to the bench. This guy's probably the guy I want on the foul line, Ron, in crunch time. And from Bill Self. Second on the way, and he got it. Early on in the season, Bill Self said Chalmers was the man he wanted with a ball in his hand at any time they had a crisis situation. Back to a three-point lead, Jayhawks. Under four minutes to play. And a whistle and a foul away from the ball. And it's going to be Griffin. If it's Griffin, it's his fifth. It is his fifth. We'll talk more about it when we return. Three-point lead, KU. With you, the regular season finales in the West Coast Conference, Gonzaga and Santa Clara tied atop the league standings. The Santa Clara victory would clinch the one seed in the conference tournament, but they trailed the dime by nine. Gonzaga, Gonzaga and San Diego locked up at 32. Earlier tonight, Georgetown's 11-game winning streak came to an end at the hands of Eric Devendorf and Syracuse. The Orange likely clinched a spot in the big dance with a 72-58 win. Okay, Reese, the situation here in Norman, Kansas, by three points. And let's take a look at this foul picked up by Griffin, his fifth. Watch the hip right here. As you see the hip by Griffin. Sends the defender, Chalmers, flying. And what has been a really good night for Taylor Griffin in terms of his effort. Not a smart play for the pre-med major. Cost uh, the Sooners a possession. And uh, lose Griffin for the night. And he's been a great contributor tonight. Yes, he has. Great energy. They look inside to Kahn. Wright reverses it. And he scores around longer and longer. Nice pick and roll. They run the pick and roll as the clock goes down. And Julian Wright doing his damage near the rim. Remember, he had 21 and 10 versus Florida early in the year. Neal a little flat on that shot, and it was Wright who came down with the rebound. Collins takes it the distance, tries to control it, and lost it out of bounds. You're up five. You don't have numbers. You're a freshman guard. You don't go out of control. You don't go out of control. How about Collins, Ron? Scoreless tonight. Comes in averaging over 12 points a game in Big 12 play, but he, we mentioned earlier he's had that deer in the headlights look tonight. Surprisingly, as well as he's played. You know, Bill Self might say if they come away with a victory in this one, if this could not be better medicine that he could have taken this close to tournament time, Big 12 tournament, and in the NCAAs, you know? Well, you're absolutely right. Watch the smoothness of Julian Wright, able to get in traffic and then slide right by longer. What a night he's had. Khan with his third foul. How about Nate Carter from the foul line? Right now, 66 of 71 in Big 12 play. He's got 19 points in this one, Fran. Workman life. Yeah, nothing easy. No, and his percentage from uh, from the field has not been that good at uh, 4 of 12. But hey, look at this, 11 of 12 from the free throw mm -hmm. line. Shekelman now on the way, and he got that one as well. So 20 points. That's not important to him, though, on this senior night. He wants a victory over the Kansas Jayhawks. One possession. Three-point game. KU on top, 58-55. And this is the scoring range that Oklahoma would have to have it to win. You are right. The less possessions, the better against a team that's much more explosive than you. 
Good job of controlling the tempo. Tough, Tough to decision. Give and go right there, and that pass from right, just a little too tall. It's, it's very hard for Sasha Khan at 6'11 to catch a ball on the move in traffic. Julian Wright tonight with a rare bad decision. Too much of a thread the needle in that situation. 16 turnovers against the Jayhawks, and 12 of those have come in the second half. And Ron, most big guys are not confident making that play on the move in traffic. Here's Mays. Going to two minutes left in our ball game. Carter, twice on the floor, spin move, not there, and Wright will come down with the basketball. Looks like he got knocked down, no call. Kansas relies now on pick and roll. Freshman not as aggressive as he's been, Ron. Rush, they just left the door open, and he missed the shot. Caught on the follow. Oh. That's huge at the 120 mark. The big body of Sasha Khan, opportunistic. You see, watch Rush lose the ball. But Khan out jumping, out timing, really. Long arm gets the put back. Well, coming up next on Sports Center, the Orange slice up Georgetown. The Mavericks taking aim at the 12 straight wins. And how oh, many Marriers uh, surprises his team down in Florida? Showed up three days early, expecting him March 1st. <laughs> oh, Sasha Khan it looks as though got a, a blow in the face. Yeah, oh, he yeah. did. Yep. Still able to hang on, make the basket. The contact right there by Carter. Situation now, Ron. Down five. Two or three possessions left for the Sooners. Don't need a three. And Sasha's going to have to stay on the bench and be attended to because of the blood. So it's OU basketball. 119 showing on the clock. Let's see Five point lead KU. See if you can get Carter or Neal. Carter, ball blocked. Jackson got a piece of it, and Jackson just tipped it right back to Brandon Rush. Taken away in a foul called an OU. Really good design play by Jeff Capel. Carter had the angle, but remember, this is one of the best shot blocking teams in the country. They block a shot about every five possessions. Good play. Look at the ISO. He gets by right. But here comes the shot blockers into play. And then Longar, unfortunately, for the Sooners with the miss. Rush gets the first one. Third foul on Carter just a moment ago. Rush gets them both. Now he hasn't scored a lot in the second half, but how big are those two right there as he pushes it out to a seven-point game? We have 60 seconds left in this one. Mays, it's a two-pointer. Misses right in the rebound and a reach-in against Neal. Mays hoping for the three to go down. It doesn't. It's interesting. Bill Self was talking about Kansas Ron having its two best practices of the year the last two days. But I think he'll be very happy if he could come away with a win on the road. Sooners just not offense. They're offensively challenged right now. Ron. Terrific recruiting class. Tony Naismith from Atlanta. Kay Davis, a local kid. Chris Early. Who plays with O.J. Mayo? Of course, Blake Griffin, who, who should be an instant impact player here. Sooners will run it up. 50 seconds showing on the clock. Seven point KU lead. Neal, three pointer. Got it. 
Timeout called immediately by Jeff Gaper. You almost think he's a better shooter with his hand in the face. <laughs> this is a guy, good set play. Ran a little rub screen off the high post. This is old fashioned basketball right here. Call this an X cut. And then Neal with the catch and shoot. Of course, Jackson's got to be careful not to foul. Neal knocks it down, and now you've got to press and foul. Well, one of the things in the back of their minds, and they've got to get over this, Bucknell in 2005, first round NCAA action, and it was Bucknell 64-63 as this shot right there by Simeon would not go. How about 2006, first round, March 17th to Auburn Hills, and it's Michigan against Kansas. Bradley, I beg your pardon, and it's a 77 to 73 win by Bradley. Four points as, well, look at this. Here's the tip going out here at OU and purchase Bucknell basketball paraphernalia to have here at, uh, at this game against Kansas. You know, two summers ago, the Bucknell bookstore ran out of Bucknell shirts, and they discovered that many of them were bought from the state of Missouri, Kansas' arch rival. <laughs> but you get an idea of what's at stake for Kansas. They have to get by those first round games. Well, that foul committed by Chris Walker. He was put in the game just to uh, give some fouls. And Longer Longer is going to check back into the lineup along with David Godbold. So it's 62 to 58 right now with KU on top. And we showed those remembrances just a couple of moments ago. These kids understand that. They want to get the monkey off their back as well as anybody and quickly. Well, you're right, Ron. And both A&M and Kansas are still in contention for number one seeds with Florida, North Carolina, Wisconsin losing. These last couple games, A&M at Texas, Texas at Kansas, and then the Big 12 tournament have major implications, particularly for the Aggies and the Jayhawks. Well, seedings are, you seedings know, obviously are critical. so very important. And a lot of articles being written on that yes. this week. And I really believe that Jayhawk fans, as I mentioned earlier, want to embrace this team, but because it is a team that can win it all, but there's still a little hesitation. Rush now with eight points, five point lead inside of 30 longer. Cuts it by two. Terrific execution, expecting the three, and they slip longer to the goal. Rush back to Chalmers. And the foul will be on Neal as he got caught in the air. Chalmers will go to the free throw line. Well, Kevin Sampson started the ball game tonight because of the uh, Big East uh, running a little bit long. Uh, we did not get to see his appearance in the ball game, but you see his parents right there. You see uh, Kelvin and his daughter. Lauren and to the left, Karen Sampson. And uh, anyway, the young man got to play for a few sequences. Jeff Capel made sure that he started him tonight. And you heard the response by Dad about how much respect he has for Jeff, how he's handled the whole thing, and like starting him in the ball game this evening. Kellen will likely join his father as a graduate assistant at Indiana. He's going to be a coach. I don't think there's any question about that. I told him he could coach about 20 years, and then he could take my place over here with you. <laughs> College basketball continues on ESPN Wednesday night. Mark this one on your calendar and be in front of the television set. A Texas size matchup on ESPN 2. 9 o'clock Eastern. It is AC Law and the Texas Aggies coming to town to take on Durant and the Texas Longhorns. That at 8 o'clock Central Time. First team All-American team in my opinion. Right there, AC Law, Aflalo, Durant, Tucker and Fazekas, who's had a monster career, and I know we're leaving out guys, leaving out guys like Jared Dudley and Noah Horford and Hansbro. There's a guy that did uh, a little scouting, Danny Ainge. Very well could have the first pick, Ron. Celtics struggling, but with a young team. So here we go. 20 seconds left in the ball game. Five point lead, Kansas. Neal back over to Carter. 
gets it away quickly. Three pointer off the mark. Inside, it is an easy putback by Bobby Mays. We have 7.9 seconds showing on the clock. Oklahoma has been very effective in the last two minutes in this comeback game. Good set plays. They've scored quickly. They've fouled at the right time. Just need a break or two, but well done. Well, as far as the NCAA tournament is concerned, should Oklahoma win this game here tonight? And, and right now, the odds are being reduced greatly. But, uh, you know, NCAA tournament still probably is out of reach. I think what Jeff would like most of all to see is that this ball club would play well enough at the Big 12 tournament, and that is to get it to the NIT so they get more repetitions, more working out together. You're right. 15 and 12. If it's a loss tonight, 15 and 13, they go to Kansas State on Saturday where we'll be for ABC. But great tradition here, Ron. But remember, they lost Scotty Reynolds, who's had a great year at Villanova. Damian James, who's starting at Texas. They had signed with Kelvin Sampson. They lost some really good players a year ago in Bookout, Gray, and Everett. But I think the program is in good hands. Really good recruiting class. And we've seen Jeff Capel enough this year to know he can coach the game. I don't think there's any question about that. We have letter director Joe uh, Castiglione. Castiglione came by just before the game today, and uh, we were just there's Joe right there visiting with uh, the athletic director uh, from uh, KU, Lou. And he just said, "Hey, we we don't only like our head coach; we love our head coach. These kids scrap, they fight, they never give up. They're well well prepared for the ball game, and they really like Jeff Capel." Lou Perkins obviously liking his situation with Bill Self up at Lawrence and why not. How about the six new coaches in the league Bob Huggins Mike Anderson Doc Sadler of course the impact those guys have had on the league Greg McDermott. Yeah, Greg's doing a good job at, at Iowa State passes it to Russell Robinson he's fouled 6.5 seconds on the clock. And of course Sean Sutton not really a new coach to the league but, but technically but technically he, he is he is and they've won 19 ball games. Although it's been a tough second half, they still have won 19 games. We've got Baylor and Baylor and uh, Nebraska on the road later in the week. Well, Robinson just made it a two-trip game, which in 6.5 seconds, you can't say anything is impossible, but this is uh, virtually impossible. I want to go back and talk about AC Law and Kevin Durant, Ron, and I don't know how you choose player of the year between both of those guys. who have been both magnificent. We are going to have fun on Wednesday. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's... Uh, you know, Law has just been absolutely incredible, and so has Durant in so many different ways. Mays dishes it off. Three-pointer on the way, and it's there. Crocker with .1 seconds on the clock. Makes it a two-point game, 67 to 65. And the inbounds pass to Robinson. This ball game is over. So let's update the standings and for the moment it will be KU moving ahead of A&M because they're idle tonight. A&M with a victory on Wednesday can uh, move back into a tie Texas at 11 and 3. So once again our final score Kansas 67 Oklahoma 65 up next on ESPN Sports Center. For more on this game tune into ESPN News for a post game extra. Now I'm Ron Franklin for Fran Priscilla and Holly Rowe and our entire crew. This has been a presentation of ESPN the worldwide leader in sports. So long everybody from Norman Oklahoma as K you wins it by a pair. Is Sports Center. Hoyas on the run trying to continue their win streak, but with the Orange men squeeze out an upset. And speaking of streaks, did the Mavericks make it 12 in a row again? Oh, David, it's on fire. You gotta get out, bud. We'll give you a ride inside the hardest NASCAR crash ever recorded. Speaking of crashes, what's the cause of Dale Jr.'s troubles? The Colts are world champions. Plus, if the Colts are to make a run at a second Super Bowl title, while well, Indy will need more than Peyton Manning's arm. We start 
starting off the jump, number three, Kansas and Oklahoma. Former Sooner coach and current Indiana coach Kelvin Sampson with his son Kellen in honor of senior night in Norman. But early on, rock, chalk, unselfish Jayhawks. Watch the passes. Four passes in the possession. All leads to a Julian Wright layup. Julian came in averaging 11 points a game. Next possession. Sharing. Hey, forget four. Seven total passes. Sets up right again, and if hitting jumpers is wrong, I want to be right. He also averages eight rebounds a game. 11 seconds left now. Sooners down by seven. Bobby May, sick crossover, buries the jumper. He had six. Next possession. Mario Chalmers got the steal, gets the pass. Mario, 18 points, huge play for Kansas. Just over eight minutes left. Taylor Griffin nails the tough bucket off the glass, draws the foul. Sooners down by three after the free throw. Two minutes later, down three again. Mike O'Neill, yeah, from the corner. A 12-3 run by Oklahoma. We are tied at 51. 3.30 left. Kansas up three. Julian Wright baking some cookies, doing his taxes, driving. He had 18 points. Jayhawks up five. Under 130 to go. Kansas up three. Brandon Rush drives. No. Sasha Khan had his back. Kansas beats Oklahoma. Serious game, 67-65. And Kansas, big win in terms of Big 12 title aspirations. Jayhawks improved to 13-2 and in conference play. A half game up on Texas A&M. Ginormous game later this week as AM and Texas face off against one another on Wednesday night, 9 Eastern, ESPN 2 HD. And now we say, what up? What's good? Sports Center rolling. Stewart's got alongside John Butchergross. Coming up on the show, legendary college football announcer Keith Jackson calls them big old uglies. Lineman, wait till you see how fast some of these big old uglies run the 40 yard dash. But we begin with two dozen. Possibilities. Yeah, the Dallas Mavericks and Georgetown Hoyas have both won 11 games in a row. Mass has already won 12 in a row twice this year. Last time Georgetown won 12 in a row was six seasons ago. And it's there we start. Georgetown and Syracuse. And boy, six weeks ago, Georgetown was sitting at 11 and 5 overall, 1 and 2 in the Big East. Much has changed since then. Again, the Hoyas have won 11 straight. They have vaulted to the top of the Big East. Six of the 11 wins have come on the road. All 11 of Georgetown's wins again have come in the Big East. They've never won that many conference games in a row. Jim Beheim, though, his organization has had much success against Georgetown of late. Roy Hibbert early. Georgetown looks good early. The hoop and the block. It was 1914 Georgetown with 818 left in the first half. Here comes Hughes. And he routes for three. And Syracuse leads by five. Georgetown shot 29.8% in this game. The 2-3 Syracuse zone causing them fits. Here the turnover the other way. And Syracuse goes up 50 to 46. Routens for three. Good. 8.30 left in the game. Eric Devendorf, Demetrius Nichols in the corner. Syracuse up by seven. Routens again for three more. Syracuse goes on a 14-0 run in the second half. They start to pull away. Big East leading score. Nichols again. He had 22. Syracuse up by 14. And then under two to go, Devendorf to Mr. Darrell Watkins. Jim Beheim, happy and proud, and he has a senior moment. We knew we had to play better. We weren't, we didn't deserve to be in 10 days ago, but college basketball can change so much in 10 days. This was our best game. I think Georgetown's a great team. They won 11 in a row, but our seniors really picked it up. In a row for Syracuse. They pull off the upset, beating Georgetown at home. Well, what happened to the Hoyas? Two of their top scorers, Jeff Green, Jonathan Wallace, struggled from the floor. Green shot three for 13. Wallace just one for seven. Just 16 combined points. Together they average over 25. Georgetown led 44-43, just under 12 minutes to play. Outscored 29-14 after that. Syracuse gets their first win in four home games against the top 25 this season. Jay Billis, it's just one loss, but should the Hoyas be concerned? 
I don't think Georgetown has much to be worried about at all. After an 11 game win streak was snapped at Syracuse on Big Monday, they ran into a very motivated Syracuse team looking to solidify an NCAA tournament bid. And Syracuse played their best game of the season defensively, very active in the 2 3 zone, forcing Georgetown to try to prove it over the top and from the perimeter. Roy Hibbert got in foul trouble early, wasn't much of a factor in the second half, and Syracuse limited Georgetown to one challenge shot on the offensive end. It was their three-point shooters that took over. Eric Devendorf putting the ball on the floor, finding open people like Andy Routens, who continued his hot streak, and Demetrius Nichols with 22 points. Give Syracuse credit for playing a great basketball game at home that put the Orange into the NCAA tournament. Georgetown still a solid number two seed and still with a chance to be the Big East champion. Syracuse has beaten Georgetown seven of the last eight games. Just three weeks ago, Syracuse was on the brink of playing itself outside the tournament field, but Jim Beheim's squad has turned things around again. They've won five straight, getting it done on the defensive end. They're 9-0 this season when holding opponents to 60 points or less. John, you mentioned it. The Mavericks have been on the roll. They've won their last 11 games. Third time this season, they've been on a double-digit winning streak. Now, they haven't been flashy on this streak, scoring just over 103 points per game, but they have been consistent. And consistent would mean beating down the Hawks on Monday night and make it 12 straight wins. They've also won 19 straight at home entering Monday. Franchise record. Why have they been running? Well, how about Dirk Nowitzki? Just ridiculified in the first quarter. This is how Dirk puts it down. He had 13 points points in the first quarter, 27 in the game. Another reason the Mavs have been rolling, ball movement. Check out Josh Howard. Double team, finds Jerry Stackhouse, have some for three. They shot seven of 14 from three land. Then Stackhouse finds Josh Howard for two, Mavs by four after one. Another reason for their play, Jason Terry is just as cool as the other side of the pillow. Jason Terry pulls his socks up high. He eats some kind of chicken meal before every game. And then he goes out and just straight balls. He had 21 points, Dallas up 16. Second half, Josh Howard may be the best talent on this team. The former ACC Player of the Year pull-up jumper. And then stutter stepping, jam. They shot 54% for the game, but this was scary for Dallas. Midway through the fourth, Mavericks up by 14. Josh Howard makes the jumper and then lands awkwardly on his ankle. He takes the jumper, excuse me. Teammates helped him off the floor. Mavericks get the win, though, 110-87. to So with the win, the Mavs are working on one of the greatest seasons in NBA history. The first team ever with three 12-game winning streaks in the same season. Now, check this out. In their last 35 games, their record is 33-2. and two. The two losses, the Lakers by three and the Bulls by 11. And after Monday's win, the Mavs travel to Minnesota Tuesday. So far this season, Dallas 10-0 in the second game of back-to-back. -back. So basically, John, what we're saying is they're good. They don't get tired. They don't get tired when they play two straight games. And did I mention the whole being good part? <laughs> More NBA action coming up inside Sports Center back in November. Kobe hit all the right notes against the Jazz, dropping 52 points. Would Bryant have the hot hand again in Utah? Tight down the stretch. And more of Manny being Manny after telling the Red Sox that he would be late. Find out how the slugger surprised his team Monday at spring training. The Bears got all the way to the Super Bowl only to come up short. With Lovey Smith's future in limbo, hear what Chicago must do to get another title shot.